What's going on YouTube? Back with another video. Today I just want to uh, talk a little bit about a new item that I picked up that I'm excited for. Um, I'm excited to use. And first let me just do a little background story of how I ended up with this item that I never thought I would have. So today I am discussing the Thule T2 Pro XT bike rack. And yes, I do know that um, I'm, I'm probably a latecomer to this whole rack. It's been out for a while. There's plenty of other uh, videos and reviews of this rack. I never thought I would spend this kind of money on a bike rack, but let me kind of explain the backstory. So being new to mountain biking, being new to the whole sport, um, when you jump into this sport, just like anything you jump into that's brand new, you don't really know what you're doing at first. You don't really know the products that you're buying. It's kind of like just testing as you go. And so my first thing is, is, hey, if I'm spending the kind of money I was spending on the first couple of bikes that I bought, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna spend a whole lot of money on accessories. So of course, the first thing you normally do is you go on Amazon, you try to find the cheapest product with the best reviews. And the first bike rack that I bought was the Allen, I think it was called the Allen 524. It was like a four, um, it was a four bike rack for a one and a half or two inch hitch. Um, I think it cost like maybe a hundred bucks. I'm actually gonna put that rack in the description. I never wanted to do a review on it only because to me it just wasn't the best bike rack. It, did, it does have decent reviews. Um, but after using it for, I think I used it almost for what, eight months, um, it already started to show where it wasn't to me, I, I knew I was gonna have to eventually upgrade that rack. So um, one of the things I didn't like about it is I don't like those particular racks where the bike's hanging on the back. Um, they bump into each other, the pedals and the handlebars scratch up the other bikes. Sometimes they'll swing a little bit, even if you put a strap around it, depending on the wind. Um, to me, they're just not the best racks to use. I mean, if for an entry-level bike rack, if you're just getting into the sport, you got one or two bikes, it should be fine. But, you know, to put like three or four bike racks, I mean, three or four bikes on it, yeah, it just wasn't, wasn't something that I would like to do. Um, actually, the Nishiki that I have in the back got a huge scratch before I even put it on the trail because I used that bike rack and the bikes were swinging a little bit and one of the levers scratched up the frame. And so, yeah, it's just not my, my rack of choice. Um, but again, I didn't know a whole lot about the bike rack. So because of that, um, you know, what, what can you do? I just went with what I thought was best at that time. So I really didn't, I mean, even though I had my little issues with it, it still did the job. It transported my bikes from A to B. So my friend Norman, who also works on my bikes, um, he was walking to my car one day, he looked at the rack and he was like, dude, when are you gonna get a, a upgrade your bike rack? I hadn't even thought about upgrading the bike rack and, until he said something. And then subconsciously I'm thinking, hmm, okay, maybe I do need to upgrade the bike rack because it really isn't the best rack. And so um, still I kept it for like another maybe three months, three or four months. And then another friend of mine, Victor, um, came and picked me up. We hit a trail one day and he came with something similar to the Thule Pro XT. It wasn't the exact same rack, but it was very, very similar. I forgot the name brand that he had. He came, scooped me up, he threw the bikes on the back, so simple and quick. I mean, no straps, no none of that. I mean, it was just like, picked it up, snapped it in, put on the lever over the tire, boom, we're ready to go. And I was like, wow, that rack is really cool. I had no idea the cost frame, or the, the, the price range of what these racks would, would be in. So I text him maybe about a couple of weeks later, hey, that rack that you just recently got, how much did you pay for that? He sent me the link, bike rack was like five to $600. I was like, no way am I gonna pay that kind of money for a bike rack. The time keeps going on and on, and again, I'm still having little small issues. Now, the number one reason that made me switch over was because of the fact that I went and, um, when I go on trails, I look. I, I'm I'm very observant. So usually I'm checking out people's bikes. I'm checking out the racks. I'm checking out what type of accessories they have on their bikes. All of that, tires, everything, right? So I start looking at people who have multiple different kinds of bike racks, and there are a lot of people out there who have that Allen 524, whatever it is, 425 bike rack. 
And I was noticing the people that had them, they were in really, really bad shape. Like rust everywhere. The threading was already starting to wear and tear. The fading, like it just looked like, I could tell when I have a product and I see what the product is gonna turn into, it's just like, yeah, that gives me more um, ambition to get rid of it before it happens. But the thing about mine was I took care of mine. Every time I go to a, a trail, I'll take the rack off, put it in the truck, so I don't expose it to the elements. I don't let it rain on it. I don't let rain get on it. I don't let it, you know, too much sunlight because the sun down here in Florida will destroy things over time as well. Um, and so I took care of mine and I kept it garage. So I think mine lasted better than others that I've seen. But still, I could easily tell like the straps were getting ready to unravel and. It, it was it was headed there and I've been using it close to a year so I probably give it maybe another year year and a half and yeah it'll have been time to get rid of that thing as well so brings me to what I'm doing now which is showing you guys this awesome bike rack and this is it this is the um, this is it man this is the Thule T2 Pro XT and I gotta admit, this thing is heavy as hell, but it's it's a beast to carry. Um, I know a lot of people do put this on their hitch and keep it on, but again, I would not be doing that. Um, I don't want to expose it to a lot of rain unless it just you know unless I have to. Uh, so it will be coming on and off as well. But this thing is heavy. It's a very very heavy piece of equipment. Putting it putting it together was a beast as well. The thing about it is the instructions are horrible. They don't really tell you how to install it. And there's other videos that discuss this as well. The mistake that I made was I watched a few people, uh, you know, do reviews on this, but I didn't watch an actual uh, installation or assembly, I'm sorry, not installation. I didn't watch any assembly videos uh, when I was looking at this on YouTube. So because of that, um, I put it together the best way that I knew how, which I did it right. The only problem was it took me almost an hour to put this thing together because it's so heavy. And I didn't realize that what I should have done in the beginning was put it in the hitch and then put it together. So I actually had to lift this thing and toss and turn it and put it on my lap and put it on my furniture to try to get this thing together. It would have been, I probably would have saved me half the time if I would have put it on the hitch and then did the assembly. And that's the way you're supposed to do it. So I kind of made a mistake on that part. So anyone that's watching this video, if you get this bike rack, put it in the hitch first and then assemble it, it will save you, literally you probably can do it within 30 minutes. Um, it's not a quick assembly, I'm going to tell you that now. So if you think you're just going to put this together in 10, 15 minutes, it's not the case. Um, it takes a little bit more than that. There's a good number of screws. Um, but, you know, it, it's pretty much self-explanatory. The major thing is, is making sure the Thule name, the, 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 um, the bar that has the Thule name on it goes to the furthest most in the back. Um, depending on how you're looking at it. If you're looking at it, I guess from this angle, it'll be in the front. And then the next bar goes in the back and it looks just like this. The swing bars, swing arms, basically, oops, basically um, are in the front going from the, uh, right here where the actual cage is. You'll see it's right by that cage and it extends out to the left. Then the rear one, you see the cage extend out to the right. And so, as long as you pretty much got this set up, this is the way it's supposed to look when you set it up. And again, it only took me an hour just because I uh, tried to install it in the house instead of <laughs> on the hitch. And so, yeah, um, don't know how much this thing weighs, but it is heavy. It is very heavy. I mean, it feels like literally a good 60 pounds. This is heavy duty. This is a heavy duty uh, hitch. Um, so now I'm going to actually put it on the truck and show you how it looks and how everything works once you get it uh, on the back of the hitch. This one right here, um, this is the all black. It does come in another color, the silver and black, but I don't have any silver on any of my vehicles, so uh, the all black looks a little bit better to me. And also this is for the two inch hitch. Um, they also have the 1.5, one and a half inch hitch if that's what you need for your vehicle. 
Um, just to kind of show you this real quick and the cool, I think, innovative thing about this particular hitch is the fact that when you actually put it in, this little silver piece right here, this actually extends out to make it a tight, secure fit inside of the hitch. So there won't be any wobble or any looseness uh, once you put it inside, which I think is really cool. Also, this goes into the, um, the bolt uh, hole in the actual hitch. Uh, it just snaps into place there. And then you turn this knob right here to actually tighten it in the hitch. There's also a lock key in there to lock the hitch in, I mean to lock the uh, rack into the hitch um, so no one can steal it, which is really cool because I couldn't do that with my, my former um, uh, bike rack. So that's pretty much the, uh, the features uh, when it comes to the hitch mount. And just to show you, this is the actual um, front tire cage. The front tires go into those cages, those little baskets. And then the straps back here uh, attached to the back wheel of the bike. And then you lock this onto the front wheel, which I'll display that for you once I get it on. Guys, I just want to show you real quick. This is pretty much how it looks once on the vehicle. Um, I put in the actual um, bolt here into the into the hole um, on the hitch and then you tighten it with this particular knob that I showed you earlier and you can see that there's an actual keyhole to lock that as well and this is pretty much how it looks once you get it on the truck so it extends further further out and I can actually even open and close my uh, my my lift gate in the back with no problem so let me show you how to actually put the bike on I'll be right back close as you can in the front but not too far uh, touching the forks then you have a strap in the back for here and it just locks into place and what's cool is, is you have actual rubber pieces this is pretty much it it's locked in um, you have this little rubber piece right here which protects the the um, the rim of the bike from scratching any pieces uh, or doing any damage there. And then you also have, as you can see here, you want to get it as close as you can to the actual fork frame. And it's locked into place. Like this bike isn't going anywhere. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it, guys. And as you can see, um, I only opened the truck to keep it open just so I won't show my license plate on here. but. Um, I can open and close it with no problem. So another cool feature about the rack, um, which I know you've probably already seen on other videos, is it has different positions that you can put the bike in. If I want to lower it, then I can do so. Bring it back up. Or if I need to tilt it up in this position, I can go higher as well. But this is pretty much it. And as you can see, 
bike is stable, it's not going anywhere. Um, another cool thing about the actual rack is that they have extensions for it, so you can actually put uh, um, an extension on here to carry two more bikes in the back. But um, but I really won't need that. So I think two bike two bikes is pretty much all that I need crazy thing is that extension is like almost just as much as the price of this particular unit so um, if I got to carry more we just, we're just gonna have to drive multiple cars so but that's about it um, yeah this is to me top of the line man. I won't I won't need another bike rack hopefully for life so highly recommend it um, yeah it is expensive when it comes to the actual price of this thing um, Sorry, I'm just carrying the camera for a minute. But uh, when it comes to the to the price, so right now these are going for retail, which I think is like 600 bucks, right? So, sorry guys, I'm just refocusing the camera. But yeah, I think they're going for like 600. Um, here's the deal that I got, and probably the best deal that I found when searching for one of these things. Um, it's very rare that you're gonna catch them on sale. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Um, very, very rare that you're gonna catch them on sale. Um, but I have heard people getting them for as close as 500, about $100 off. Now, how is that? You're gonna to have to shop around. Here's how I did it. Um, Dick Sporting Goods has a random, you know, I don't know, I would say at least once a month, they'll do this 20% off uh, sale on mostly everything in the store. The problem is, is that, but it's only online, and they don't normally sell these at Dick's Sporting Goods. You have to do it online. A lot of stores don't carry it because it's big. Um, it's in a huge box, it weighs a lot, it's heavy, um, all of that. So Dick's, what I did was, when Dick's had the 20% off, they have an exclusion list of what that doesn't cover. And a lot of times it's the name brand stuff like Ping, Nike, Adidas, Bose, Oakley, well not Oakley, it just depends on the brand. Like some name brands, they just don't go on sale. Thule wasn't on the exclusion list. And so because of that, um, you know, I call corporate. I'm like, look, I'm trying to check out. It won't give me the 20% off. Um, I don't see it on the exclusion list. What can you do? Nine times out of 10, they'll give you the 20% off over the phone. The only thing is, is you gotta buy it over the phone. You gotta give them your credit card number over the phone. Um, but they gave me the 20% off, so 20% off 60, that's 120, I mean 600, that's $120 I got off. So now we're talking about 480, that's less than 500. But of course I had to pay tax on it. And so that brought it up to, I think I ended up paying like 510 or 515 total for the rack. And that also included a $10 shipping fee because of the size and weight of the box. Which normally they do free shipping, but this is considered oversized. And normally they charge like $30, but she only charged me $10 um, because of the mishap. So because of that, I got it for a pretty good deal, I think at $5.30 something um, overall. So yeah, next time Dix has a sale, that 20% off sale, if you can't get it on the website and you're trying to check out and cart, definitely call corporate office and nor normally they'll, they'll, get the, um, they'll get it for you for the 20% off. Uh, and have it shipped to your home. So that's the only way that I've seen it on sale. And I've been looking at this rack probably for the last maybe two and a half, three months, just trying to see if anyone can go down on the price. And that's the only thing that I found, which I think is probably the lowest I've heard anyone pay for it when I'm looking at their videos. When it comes to uh, that uh, discount, definitely check the Dick's website. When they have the 20% off everything, um, it's probably not going to do it when you check out, so you're going to have to call corporate, but they'll honor it and give you the 20% off the 600 for the um, for the bike rack. So yeah, just be prepared to know what you're dealing with when you get it, because it's heavy, it's going to it's gonna be um, a beast to, to kind of put together, um, but once you put it in the hitch, it shouldn't give you that much of a problem. So other than that, guys, um, that's just a review on the actual rack itself. Um, again, I'm still trying to uh, sell the GT. I got it back to stock. You probably saw it when I put it on the rack. And um, my next goal is to get a full suspension bike 
and um, just saving up, you know, for it. Uh, probably won't get it until early spring. So until then, I'm just going to be riding the Colorado for a while uh, until I get the bike. So right now, I think I've narrowed it down to about three bikes that I'm that I'm interested in. So we'll see which one we, which one I'll get. Um, but I kind of think my mind is set on one, but I still want to try out another one um, that a uh, good friend of mine who always comments, uh, Lawrence, who recommended the bike for me. Um, I want to check that one out as well to kind of kind of see how that one feels and then uh, I'll make a decision and, and go from there. Um, so yeah, I think that's just the, the growth of uh, getting into the sport, man. You start off with the hardtails. They've been fun. They've been great. The Nashiki I just like just because I just got a love for it. It's my first bike. Uh, got a lot of stories already on that thing. The GT is more recent. It's not, I don't really have too many stories at all with that one. You know, so I'm not as attached to it as I am with the Colorado. So other than that, guys, I hope everyone's doing well. Hopefully I'll be able to get another trail video pretty soon. It, I was going to go this weekend, but it stormed 24 hours straight yesterday. So I already know when it rains that hard here in Florida, you hit a trail, it's going to be nothing but mud, closures, delay. I mean, just it's going to be a mess. So it's no need me even going right now until it just kind of stays stays warmer and cool and dries all that water up. So other than that, guys, I'll catch you on the next video. I'm out.